This is Leif Kunkel with GX Products, and I want to show you something really cool. New holster hanger from Henning Group. This is the Henning T1000 holster hanger. This is the most adjustable and compact holster hanger for a traditional style holster on the market right now. A lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of iterations went into this kind of show you what all the adjustments are here exactly what makes this up so the first thing you really notice is and i've never seen this before i don't think it's been done but henning has utilized a picatinny style rail here for the actual height adjustment that is a very very positive secure way to have a large range of height adjustment on there and then the cant of the holster is adjustable with these three screws up top. It includes a really nice Bondus ball wrench for all of these adjustments. So that center screw is the pivot screw. You loosen the two up on the arc. And then you have cant adjustment this way. And the really cool thing, this caught my eye in the beginning, is this arch dovetail in the bottom here. Male and female dovetail that provides additional rigidity to keep that plate, that Picatinny rail drop from flexing. So that rides in that arch dovetail there. Tighten that up wherever you want your can adjustment. Then you have rotational accent, axis adjustment here. Um, I'll actually take this, loosen these up. So here's your rotational axis from the top. That you can adjust and then you have with these two screws here you have can't adjustment towards or away from your hip so you can really dial this thing in to be perfectly in line with your draw stroke really custom tailor it and then these two screws are the cross bolts that go through two slots in the Picatinny rail. You have to take them all the way out to make the adjustment. But then that slides up and down on that Picatinny rail to wherever you want. That is a large range of height adjustment there. Probably the largest range of height adjustment of any hanger out there considering how compact the overall height is. Put those back in. Now you also know how narrow the overall footprint of this hanger is, and it does fit on a single link of a link belt without impeding the articulation of the hinge lines on either side of it. And I'll go ahead and mount that on there and show you how that's gonna work. One more thing that Henning did have the forethought to include on this hanger is he did drill and tap a couple of auxiliary holes here on the backside that are gonna be for different thigh pads that he's working on if you're a person that that needs a thigh pad um, to keep any hanger from digging into your thigh those are coming um, but another nice thing is because this mounting platform is offset forward of the center line of the hanger you can actually have the hanger more on your belt at a three o'clock position rather than in front of three o'clock and the holster will be offset in front of it a lot of people started having um thigh discomfort if issues with hangers once they removed the uh the location requirement um in the different divisions that mandated that the um hanger the holster be behind your hip bone once they started sliding that hanger forward of their hip bone the hanger started digging into the front of their thigh so that actually alleviates that a little bit by bringing that back closer to behind your hip bone while keeping the holster itself in front of it I'm going to go ahead and mount this hanger now to one of my uh, my vice holsters. This is my single stack holster that I just pulled off of 
my rig here. So Henning, uh, for the time being, is using the traditional Blade Tech three-hole pattern. That's the most common mounting platform on the market. But he's also talking about maybe uh, making some some T-plates, Y-plates, whatever you want to call these, uh, to accommodate the taller Safari Land mount. So what you need to do is you need to take these two mounting screws off, all the way off, so you can get to all of the uh, holster mounting screws. And one other nice little detail that I'm going to point out is on all of these screws, he includes, let's see if I can get this to focus, a double serrated small footprint flat washer under the screw to keep those screws from vibrating loose. They dig into the back side of the the just shoulder of the head of the screw and into the aluminum to keep those from backing out. That's a very nice, nice touch. So now we're going to mount this up. The holster, he includes um, 832 button head, machine screws, along with the pass-through posts. Not too many hangers include the pass-through posts. My holsters do, but not too many hangers do. Trying to do this on camera here. I'm just going to snug these up. I'm going to go back and Loctite everything later. Always a good idea to Loctite all your screws. Once you get everything where you know you want it, a little drop of blue rock Loctite is not going to hurt anything. Okay. Now we're going to mount this back up to here. Top screw started. Bottom screw. I'm going to set this up pretty neutral to start or I play around with the angles too much. Snug those up. Now, I'm going to pull these mounting straps off the uh, back side here. These steel straps are nice and thin, so they allow the uh, Velcro on the inside of the belt to still function on either side of the strap as well as in between them. So you get maximum contact area there on the Velcro. So I'm going to put this right back in the same spot um, that I had my, my other hanger. And actually, now that I think of it, I'm probably going to have to move it back one link because of how this is offset forward. So if I want my holster in the same, my gun in the same spot rotationally on my waist, I'm actually gonna go back one. Let's see if I can do this without knocking everything over.
one strap. Before I get these too snug, probably have to loosen the other one up a little bit. I want to make sure I'm centered on that link so they both articulate. So you see, you still have articulation on both sides. It's narrow enough to allow that. And depending on how that articulation works out when I'm wearing it, um, sometimes if you don't bridge a hinge line on these link belts, um, it can induce a little bit of rotation on the holster while you're wearing it, the whole assembly with the with the hanger and everything. But I'll check that out um, in dry fire. And uh, if it does rotate a little bit, as in if it wants to do that, I will bridge one link with that hanger and lock two links together. But cross that bridge when we get to it. That's just one of the little idiosyncrasies of these links belts so there we've got that mounted up everything's pretty neutral so far it looks like I might have the drop a little low but we'll check that gotta make sure the butt of the gun is above the top of the belt I'm way good there I'm way good there we'll check the offset Always make sure you check all these dimensions to make sure you're legal. Now in single stack, it's going to be the width of an overlay between the inside of the gun and the inner belt. The inside of the inner belt. It looks like I'm going to be good there. And you can also change that can adjustment a little bit to uh, make up for that. But I think I'm going to be good right there. So make sure you're using the correct dimension. For single stack carry optics production, it's the width of the overlay. For the race gun divisions, limited, open, limb 10, it's the length of the overlay. So don't get those confused. One other thing that I want to mention that um, I actually changed based on a gut feel right when I, not long after I unboxed this, was I actually flipped this um, this vertical offset mount over to not have anything sticking up past the top of the holster, and this design allows you to do that. Um, and I might have been incorrect in doing that because that flipping that over drops um, the whole assembly, or actually raises the whole assembly further up. So that's why when I'm at Close to the bottom of the end of this adjustment, the height of the, the butt of the gun is still significantly over top of the belt, um, which is not a bad thing. But to undo that, what I have done, I'm going to pull the, uh, the Y plate with the holster on it back off of the hanger. And then it's this whole assembly here that I flipped over. So you'll see if I pull the cross bolts out of the pick rail slots, take that whole thing off, you can then, this is adjustable um, in terms of front offset, rear offset for left-handed and right-handed shooters. So it's completely ambidextrous. You don't have different righty and lefty hangers. So now what I'm going to do, now that I disassembled that, is I'm going to flip this plate back over. I'm still going to keep the offset to the front where the, uh, the holster mounts to. And the head of these can adjustment screws originated from the top, not the bottom. Like I said, that was something I flipped based on a gut feel that might not have been correct.
Imagine that. The first thing I think may not be correct. So now I'm going to put that back into the same slot. Now the cross bolts are going to load through from the back side. And Henning does specify on his website if you want the uh, the hanger assembly pre-assembled for left or right-handed. So you won't have to figure that part of it out. Slide those up. Now we're going to bolt this back up like we did before. bolt, bottom bolt, I'm set that up pretty neutral again, snug those up, now we're going to take a look at where the gun ends up height wise, so you see that dropped everything much further down, Still legal. Yeah, you see the butt of the gun, that's about square, is still up past the top edge of the belt. So, and when you look back over here, there's not a whole lot sticking up there. So my gut feel was pretty misinformed on that one. Um, what I, I just want to make sure when I go to draw the gun that the thumb safety and maybe the very top edge, this rounded edge of the holster, is all my thumb contacts. I don't want to hit anything there. So even set up that way, like he intended it to be, it's not an issue whatsoever. So probably don't monkey around with that when you get it. It is not necessary. That is still very compact. Lots of room for your thumb. Very cool. So there you have it. It's the initial setup. I'm going to do some tweaking because there's a lot of adjustments to that you have the opportunity to fine tune now. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, these are available on uh, on Henning's website. The retail price is $149.95, so they are on the higher end of the uh, the price spectrum as far as hangers go. But look at what you're getting. Um, there's no other hanger that has this many adjustments built into it. And it's a lot of time, a lot of machine work that goes into that. So that's henningshop.com. Like I said, the retail price is $149.95. It's available in all of the uh, the great colors, or at least most of them for the first run that um, all of Henning's base pads are available in. And there's going to be some special color combinations coming out in the future. Thanks for checking this out. I'm really looking forward to running it. And thank you, Henning, for constantly innovating in the market.